Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be from K-League, which you can check out every once in a while on Art of Turtle and Urban and G5 and all of them group up. It's kind of, you have NAPL, which is Jayun's uh, mostly doing the organization for that, I believe. Zen might be doing a little bit, but that tends to be the top 10, 12 players uh, in North America on the ladder. And for the people on the cusp or that can't make that, usually they're participating in this. So upper left-hand corner, we got range starting as the red Protoss bottom left-hand corner. We got, actually I'm not sure what the qualifications are for NAPL. I know some people hop in and drop out. It might be a MR cap as well. But anyway, bottom left-hand corner, we got G5 starting as the yellow Protoss. I will say G5 is pretty regularly in Artosis's MMR range. Uh, range is as well. Range has been tearing it up and on, this should be a fun one. I should have checked the map beforehand. So this is this gonna be, this is on Largo by the way. Should be an interesting one, because you have Ranged, who has a honestly incredible game sense, although that can sometimes be problematic, because he's... Often, I, sometimes I worry where he's in games where he's relying on that game sense, looking for something in particular that's delaying some decision-making that might be happening otherwise, and it ends up hurting his... Uh, hurting his momentum in particular matches. G5 is one of those guys, though, that... You have nicknamed the Colonel out there. He, he's really aggressive, and I kind of enjoy that because he's not just aggressive, he's cerebral and aggressive. He looks for, he'll study his opponents, he'll try to figure out what the particular weakness is in their style of play, and he will attempt to exploit that. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's so all in. It's not just that he's all in, he's all in versus, in my opinion, particular opponents that he studied or has a sense of. And so if you have a weak, honestly, I feel like G5 is an excellent player to play against if you want to improve on your weaknesses, because he's one of those guys that if you have a weakness, he will find it and he will try to charge into it, especially if you play in multiple games. I actually really want to see him in top shape versus a player like Jayun. I feel like Jayun does the opposite, where Jayun does that same sort of strategy where he's looking to play against his opponent, but he's looking to play as aggressively and defensively as possible to kind of get so in, invite his opponent to overextending and then go for a macro, uh, go for smothering macro. I'm wondering if that actually might end up playing against G5 ultimately though. So interesting here, we got a pylon bottom right. So this is cute. So we got one pylon in base from G5. He's planting a pylon down in the bottom right hand corner. See, this is what I was talking about. This right here. So ranged is, and I really, you, you could not ask for anything better against a player from range. Range is gonna sneak in. He's got the game sense to notice there's a missing second pylon, right? He's holding a zealot right here. But seeing that, and you can see G5 trying to zone him out, but seeing that missing second pylon, now the question is, is wh wh how does he respond? He's already got his second pylon down interior to base. He's not going for range. Range is going for G5. So he might be thinking, okay, is this a fake? Where's that second pylon? Because especially with range going right here, you might think, okay, this is going to get canceled as soon as this probe dies. And the purpose of this is to go for some sort of proxy robo. That basically, that lack of pylon is completely, is, is definitely not going to go unnoticed from range. And that might invite him to play a much more defensive game style. Unfortunately for G5, he's going to end up with a somewhat lingering probe. The probe going to sneak back, but that also might be... <laughs> That might be a gear to range to like, okay, maybe that's where I need to start exploring. G5 actually moving up with his units as well. Is he gonna go for aggression here? That would be crazy aggressive. Trying to, it looks like he's, yeah, trying to bait these, this Dragoon out of position, maybe away from the Zealot, so that maybe he can turn around and engage. The distance, however, is going to be detrimental because, uh, yeah, you already have the two Dragoons on point rather than having to wait for that second Dragoon to move up and reinforce. Anyhow. Robotics facility up. We have range has gone for the Dragoon range upgrade. He's also going into robotics. We also have robotics, a, a two gate robo on the opposite side from G5. We'll see how G5, or how I should say range opts to play this. I think he's trying to play this as safely as he can. He's gonna go for a second gateway himself, a little bit delayed and G5 getting aggressive. So popping up there and arranged again, seeing that lack of pylon Playing a little bit timid, backing up, wondering if there's a proxy gateway or something along those lines. And now that G5 has shown a bit of aggression and maybe convinced range out of grabbing an expansion, he's going to go ahead and entirely back up himself. But look at this. He's already dropped a third gateway. Interestingly enough. So really show, like just tossing a lot of stuff at range where it might be a challenge for range to really get notice on what G5 is up to. And on top of that, this is also delayed or it is not incapacitated entirely, but it's really 
blunted ranged uh, ability to move up with his own units to kind of gauge what G5 is up to. So he saw the missing pylon. He was able to press up and get aggressive and deny any sort of movement out on the map. And now he, he saw some units acting like they're aggressive. That plus the missing probe, he might have been thinking, oh, there's some sort of attack going on. But in the meantime, he's produced a shuttle. He's gone up to robotic support bay. I think he's trying to play it half and half here. And G5 dropping a pylon at the six o'clock location. Is that where, and another pylon kind of out on the field out of odd places, I presume to provide some scouting. He's continuing to build the Dragoons. This is not out of the realm of defense for range. Those Reavers, although it looks like you went observer first, having Reavers out in the field, you can negate a lot of the Dragoon advantage if you land the shots. And on top of that, if G5 gets overly aggressive and tries to press up range's ramp, that will be an advantageous battle location for G5, depending on how ranged it ingresses against it. But the observer going to spot the observer, which is going to give ranged the heads up that, okay, robotics tech was in fact the play. He's not going to have a, an idea of how many Dragoons are being fielded for G5, but this is actually a pretty good situation for ranged overall. As soon as he has this Reaver out, he can go ahead and move along the low ground. In the meantime, ranged moving that observer out. I'm not sure if he caught that Dragoon moving to the opposite position. I think he wants to just make sure he's got info. Really wants to see whether the natural expansion's up or not. So here sees the lack of natural expansion. He's going to fan down in the meantime. The probe's starting to make that its way that direction as well. The shuttle there with the reaver and that is going to give a tactical advantage to g5 or to sorry to range but g5 moving up to engage this is focusing firing one dragoon on the corner the zealots on top of the zealots otherwise now the reaver joining the battle and g5 upon seeing that reaver is going ahead and backing out might want to get out of dodge and this is going to swing so in the meantime range actually forcing the fight i thought he was just going to let those dragoons out but no recognizing he's upper reaver going to go for pot shot attacks unfortunately that reaver now distanced in that attack right this second so it's three dragoons versus two dragoons as far as the exit g5 does have an initial gateway to resupply this but he's going to go ahead and drop his nexus and it looks like so range saving up for nexus is going to get a few seconds later but it's a big advantage to range because now he has an open reaver to go ahead and move up he's got a pretty sizable dragoon count underneath this and g5 again not dropping a beat continuing to press forward he needs to be very very careful with this attack this is i love when range does this actually i think this is one of his great strengths is his uh setting up using his game sense to set up for engagements exactly like this so g5 moving up into the misfire he's lucky he didn't lose a dragoon but is now down to base shield right there still not ahead observers over expansions both directions range has a slight supply lead is going to go ahead and isn't able to kill that observer over the edge but is able to weaken it and might get some free pot shots with this reaver which is going to put g5 in a very difficult situation so yeah one pot shot right there a dragoon down and now despite being up a gateway the lack of reavers in play fourth gateway drop the lack of reavers is really putting g5 honestly in a pickle looks like range ooh, playing a little bit risky right here moving that observer forward he's just going to rely on that high ground advantage to pull back and probably scoop up that second reaver g5 really can't ingress on anything right this second it looks like that observer over the natural expansion going to get poked away a bit but you can see just as between these players it's very much an information battle both directions and i feel like they've got at least at this stage they've both are kind of aware of where each other are as far as the setup and i think range knows that he's at least ahead in aggressive tech g5 trying to well he's leading a probe forward it looks like maybe to try to test the front here a probe actually out here for range to provide additional scouting. G5 was hoping you'd be able to sneak back around. But upon that probe spotting, I'm going to go ahead and back right back out. But range now going to take the low ground. Probe making its way forward. The Reaver is here as well. Only an initial shot, second shot able to land on the additional troops right there. So G5 ne needs to be a little bit worried. He needs to he unfortunately isn't gonna be able to get any sort of pincer, but range doesn't wanna attack it in open field and risk losing that shuttle. So gonna go ahead and evacuate. Ooh, gonna lose a Dragoon because of pathing, maybe barely survives and pulls back out. Range still with the supply lead overall at even workers and definitely has the tech lead overall with the Reavers. Keep in mind the shuttle is a, a spot of supply. But G5, look at this, not missing a beat, gonna go ahead and grab the six o'clock base on top of everything else. 
range starting to stage out. He's saving the minerals to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock as well. So this might turn into an interesting mid-game macro battle. We also have ranged grabbing shuttle speed to continue with that advantage, and G5 refusing to switch to robotics here. Instead, just continuing with five gateway play, and this has been two gateway, which might give him an overwhelming attack force that might help negate the Reavers, depending on positioning overall. The Observer's trailing here. Range sneaking in underneath. G5 might go for a heads-up trade. He has the option to cancel the six o'clock Nexus, if there's movement to the natural expansion, but it might be like a heads up base trade scenario. Two zealots engaging and finding that attack force out of position. They're gonna die fairly rapidly. The probe's evacuating already from both sides and range now attacking the natural expansion is G5 getting a little bit later. Probe's gonna go ahead and blockade and allow the reaver to try to push shots through into the low ground. G5 doesn't have that sort of advantage. In the meantime, range bullying himself up into the main if he can get the reavers there that would be fantastic so it might be a trade and i think that trade might end up in range's favor overall because he's going to end up with two reavers potentially interior to g5's base but he needs to elevate those reavers up i'd prefer seeing the reavers up in the main okay now he's going to actually move the reavers up into the main and yeah potentially going to work on the pylons probes now pulling for g5 so the natural expansion going down this blockade of probes plus the reaver is going to stop g5's aggression but the reaver is just going to get all sorts of damage on the worker lines, on the the latent probes that are trying to attack against this, so they're wiped out, and there's only two pylons defending or to to power all of these gateways. So if ranged focus fires them down, that's gonna be it. G5 trying to pull back with the dragoons he has. Unfortunately, if the second pylon gets wiped out, he's gonna be, especially before he arrives, he's gonna be in a situation where he's trying to battle uphill. So we got just three gateways. One of them looks, so it's gonna be down to two gateways. The natural expansion is still up for G5, so it might actually be an interesting salvageable, salvageable position. Range is already distance mining, trying to make the best of it. The Reaver exposed, it get wi gets wiped out. G5 still has to walk uphill with the majority of his Dragoons to help defend against Range, but Range has some of those Dragoons that produced out of the gateways that G5 pocketed in the meantime. So wiping out the attack forces, and because that Nexus wasn't taken out, and because that 12 o'clock Nexus was canceled, G5 now defending this is all of a sudden in an economic advantage. Holy cow! So G5 needs to get the pylons back up, needs to get some more troops out. Range is redropping that natural expansion. The six o'clock base is up. So G5 is gonna have, despite being down workers, because he's binding off multiple bases, in theory, should be able to end up with superior economic output, but he's gotta have the raw materials, or I should say the, well, I'm not sure what to call this, gateways, materials, they're kind of something weird in between. He's gotta have the raw uh, production to be able to facilitate that economic advantage. Range on the other side, licking his wounds a bit, in a situation where, honestly, with the sizable supply lead, he needs to get aggressive so that G5 can't capitalize on that supply lead. Scooping up Reavers this time with the shuttle, looking to engage once again. This Observer taking a few shots as it's making its way out. G5 sees that army incoming. Ranged going to, this is wise, ignoring the high ground and going to sweep all the way around. And now G5 is in the battle for his life, potentially. Range backing up though. So the shuttle, okay, it's going to check out. Is it going to check out and find the six o'clock? Okay, sees the pylon, finds the nexus, and now that's going to trigger range. And we're going to, we might see a repeat now of that previous engagement. We've got four dragoons making their way out. They might be cut off. So G5 trying to force ranged back. And it looks like it might succeed. Range now pulling back. His reinforcements have been picked off. And G5, what he's doing is he's buying himself a lot of time. Now that he's got four gateways back up, we have four gateways, however, on the other side, plus robotics facility production, potentially. G5 checking the 12 o'clock to confirm that he's still potentially got an economic lead and has a way back into this. He's way down on workers, however. Down on workers and down on supplies. So definitely playing off the back foot, but in a recoverable situation here. Six o'clock starting to get saturated. The, the natural expansion is still a little bit light. Range has repositioned now. G5 streaming across the right-hand side of the map. Recognizing that Range would have the high ground advantage, but now Range going to be able to go ahead and potentially clip the natural expansion and patiently reposition to the 6 o'clock base to, to wipe that out, at which point he'd be up a base, up supply, and in a victorious situation. Instead, though, it looks like he's going into the main. The shuttle gets wiped out, so now two Reavers are stranded. However, they're attacking the Dragoons that are latently there. Range pushing his way up. 
And it's again a repeat scenario from earlier. Now the Dragoons are making the way back for G5. So range, let's see if he tries to defend from the natural. One Dragoon is latently there, starting to work on the gateways. The probes are pulled once again. However, I think ranged, despite all of this, with that natural expansion up two bases versus two, and still with the sizable supply lead and more workers, is going to be able to walk this one out from here. The workers doing some great disruption over the lower Dragoons. G5 is honestly not making this easy in the slightest. The Dragoons still firing from the low ground, but the probes right there also doing some a bit of latent damage, but now it looks like it is just probes and a single Dragoon, a few additionally produced. And that Dragoon's wiped out. Interestingly enough, we're at two base versus two base again. Huge supply lead for range though, after all the damage he's inflicted. A single probe attacking the 12 o'clock. That's gonna get wiped out. And ranged honestly might be able to, I, I'm curious if he wants to get aggressive or defensive here. He could press forward, potentially wipe out the six o'clock. I don't think G5, no, G5 is gonna GG right there, recognizing he's behind and out. And he also saw that 12 o'clock base. Great one, back and forth. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to check out K League while you can. Look for ranged. Uh, I think he just missed pre Pro League this season. I'm, I'm guessing he's gonna be in Gosu League. Uh, this upcoming season of BSL. Just FYI, you guys, I'm not sure if I'm casting this upcoming season or not. I haven't made a decision. I'm debating uh, taking some time off. But uh, in the meantime, be sure to enjoy it and check it out. Still not 100%, but just also it's a little bit late as far as content that I'm able to produce on the YouTube channel right this second because I just don't have things to, to pace there. If I'm doing StarCast, that need, the StarCast replays, they need to go to StarCast TV. Uh, when I hand them to, the, to him, I'm never sure when they're going to end up on the channel. Sometimes they end up like after ASL seasons or in between a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully you'll stick around for whenever I'm getting back to this. Uh, thank you for listening.